Probably most of you know the answers for all of them, but I want you to just take a look at the theory which is behind all these four problems. Okay? Now, this theory is going to help you with solving more difficult problems than these. Okay? I have square root of 4. Okay? I can write this radical in the exponential form. Okay? By simply writing 4 to power 1 half. Remember, anytime we have no index, there is always invisible 2. That invisible 2 goes always to the denominator of my exponent. Anytime there is no exponent next to the radicand, there is also always invisible 1. This the invisible 1 goes to the numerator of my exponent. Okay? Next, I have to look always at the denominator of my fraction. I have 2. I have to ask myself a question, what number raised to the second power, because I have 2 over here, right? What number raised to 2 is going to give me 4? We know that 2 to the second power is equal 4. 2 to the second power is equal 4. And I copy down the exponent. Okay? I have exponent outside of the parentheses and I have exponent inside of the parentheses. Because I have fraction outside of the parentheses, I'm going to convert exponent inside of parentheses also to fraction. Because I have fractions, I have to multiply numerator by numerator and denominator by denominator. So I have 2 and 2 over 2. Now, 2 divided by 2 is 1. That's why I have 2 to the first power. 2 to the first power is equal to 2. This is, this is why square root of 4 is equal to 2. Now, let's take a look at this example. I have negative square root of 49. Okay? So, my negative sign is going to stay. Radical I'm going to convert to the exponential form. So I'm going to have 49 and power 1 half. Again, someone is going to ask why I have 1 half. Remember, next to 49 I have always exponent 1. Next to any number or any variable I have always exponent 1. Okay, if there is no any exponent. Anytime I have no index, there is always invisible 2. Remember, exponent goes always to the numerator and index, my invisible 2, becomes visible and goes to the denominator. Next, I have to look at the denominator. I have 2. I ask myself a question. What number raised to second power is going to give me 49? Okay, I'm going to copy this negative. And 7 raised to the second power is going to give me 49. I copy down the exponent. Now, because this is fraction, I'm going to convert my internal exponent also to fraction by writing 2 over 1. Remember, anytime we have external exponent and internal exponent, we have to multiply them together. That's why I'm going to have minus 7 and 2 times 1 is 2 over 2. 1 times 2 is 2. So I have minus 7. 2 divided by 2 is 1. Anything raised to power 1 is the same thing. So I'm going to have minus 7. This is the solution to my problem. Let's take a look at next example. I have square root of 16. Everybody knows that this is equal 4. But someone can ask why. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to convert my radical to the exponential form. So I'm going to have 16, and I have 1 half. Again, remember, anytime I do not have an exponent, there is always invisible 1. That invisible 1 becomes, becomes my numerator over here. And anytime I do not have index, there is always invisible 2. And that invisible 2 becomes denominator in my exponent. Next, I have to look at my denominator. My denominator is 2. I ask myself question, what number raised to power 2, okay, always denominator, is going to give me 16? 4 to the second power 
gives me 16. Okay, and I copy down the exponent. Now, because I have fraction outside of the parentheses as exponent, I'm going to convert also internal exponent to fraction. Okay, that's why I'm going to have 4. And anytime we multiply fractions, we have to multiply numerator with numerator, denominator with denominator. That's why I'm going to have 2 over 2. 4, 2 divided by 2 is 1. 4 to the first power is equal to 4. This is why square root of 16 is equal to 4. Now, let's take a look at this example. Okay, I have 0.81. Okay, this is nothing else, just I have to copy the sign, of course. Square root of 81 over 100. This is 81 hundredths. Okay, so what I'm going to do next, I'm going to write the negative sign because this sign is going to be always with my with my uh, example. Okay, we don't cancel it. And I'm going to write square root of 81 over square root of 100. Okay, we are going to use the properties of, of radicals. And now I'm going to have minus. I can write this as an exponential form. I'm going to have 81 to power 1 half. And I have 100 to power 1 half. My question is, what number raised to the second power is going to give me 81? 9. I have 9 to the second power, okay, to power 1 half. Of course, we have negative over here. And I have question, what number raised to the second power is going to give me 100? I have 10 to the second power and power 1 half, okay? Again, we are going to cancel out this two with this one, okay? Because we are going to multiply the fractions. So this one and this one will cancel out. And this one and this one is going to cancel out. I have two and two will cancel out. So I'm going to have nine over 10. And this is the solution to my problem.